G'day there. My name is Ted Woods. And I'm his son, Patrick Woods. We're at Nildotty, South Australia, just in the Murray Mallee. Um, we're uh, originally Dad's Orchard. Uh, we've taken over from Dad 2016, I think it was. Um, yes, that's right, exactly. So 2016, you took over. Uh, in 1983, we came here. Uh, we, we came here from uh, a place called Wollonga, where we bought our first almond block uh, on the basis of what our next door neighbour was, was doing. Uh, I, I chatted to my next door neighbour and he was telling me that these two trees in the back of his yard said they pay for his council rates. So a, a light came on and said, you better follow this up. <laughs> And I did, and this is where we are. And uh, to just to, uh, to digress slightly, the almond industry initially started in Marion. Uh, they had to leave Marion simply because of the metropolitan sprawl. So then they moved, and water was a problem too. And then they found that uh, there's plenty of room and cheap land at Wollonga where the industry established itself and uh, de de developed. And it wasn't until a few, quite a few years later that they were beginning to realise that irrigation was becoming a very advantageous proposition. The problem with Wollonga was that it has limited groundwater. So uh, Eric Lacey, who was the basic founder of Arvind Co-op uh, decided to have a go at the Riverland, which is the, this, this property here, uh, which he established, uh, which I might I'll point out, was also opened by the Right Honourable Thomas Playford. Playford yes, Thomas yes. Playford. He uh, opened up, up the, uh, the, the pumping plant and it's been running ever since. And of course, with the. Uh, I mean, that uh, was back in 60. Well, that would be the very 60. early 1960s. Uh, I think it would have been pretty close to 61, 62 yeah. that the first trees were planted. Yeah. Uh, this particular block was uh, planted a little bit later than the house block where, we, where our main crop there was Chelliston, which was a. a uh, a stable mate for for the industry in Wollonga, which is also, I might add, is a Australian native produced almond variety. If you look look around us today on this particular day, it's a nice, bright, sunny day, uh, ideal for, for gro gro growing conditions. Uh, this is uh, in comparison to where the Almond industry first developed. Uh, to my knowledge, the, the, the uh, almond industry grew at Marion in the suburbs of Adelaide. Uh, it, it didn't get the weather uh, sunshine as we get here. All right, yes, they got more rain, but they certainly didn't get the sunshine as what we get here. Uh, and plus, the, uh, the suburban sprawl was becoming a serious problem and they decided that uh, they'd have to look elsewhere and that's when they found Wollonga. Wollonga ha had a good uh, rainfall. The uh, sun sun sunny weather was better than uh, Adelaide uh, and so, so they established the almond industry in Wollonga. Uh, over, over the years they began to find that uh, with the advent of irrigation, uh, they found they needed more water. Well, they put bores down, but uh, uh, they were approached by, by the Department of Agriculture to keep the, the water usage down because it might uh, get the seawater to, to seep in and so destroy the quality. So that, that was a, 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 another warning sign to, to go up. Perhaps they need to start looking elsewhere. Well, at that particular time, Eric Lacey 
was chairman of the Yarman Co-op and he, he looked at uh, uh, the Riverland. He, he, uh, on his, I suppose, research found that uh, the weather conditions were far superior. Land was a lot cheaper. Plenty of water. And absolutely plenty of water. Yeah. Uh, because you got the River Murray going past its doorstep. Uh, apparently that's what happened. Uh, uh, Eric Lacey established the, the almond industry here in the Riverland. And from there it's just grown and grown. And right now it's not only in a bigger portion of South Australia, it's also gone into Victoria and New South Wales. So um, just getting back to the, the planting of this orchard, you're going from Marion to Willunga, and then this was the stepping stone basically yes. for the Riverland, wasn't it, this, this orchard? This was planted later in 1967, 68? Yes, and at least, uh, 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 not, not 1967, 68, uh, which would make them about 15 years old when we came here, yeah. which put them Should into full, full production, yeah. uh, which helped pay our mortgage. Yeah. And there, there was a, uh, uh, a pro professor came out from the States uh, to assess and to advise the almond industry what they should be doing and how, how to go about it. And his comment about the Australian variety, the Chelliston, he said, it's a mortgage saver. He said, you pay off your mortgage, you're safe. If you don't pay off your mortgage, you're out, Charlie. <laughs> and he was dead right. That's right, it was in 1983 that uh, with the General Motors, which is where I work, uh, uh, I, I could see that the lifespan there is is probably limited in that uh, uh, if anything happens, uh, what what does a man do? Uh, I had a small plot of almonds down at uh, Aldinga and uh, I was uh, a company, the General Motors, said they are going to move operations to Elizabeth. Now this meant travelling from Aldinga to Elizabeth every day. And this was a daunting, prohibited proposal. Uh, so we uh, decided we would either stay at the Wollonga area or we we go to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth did not turn me on. Fortunately, Eric Lacey's property, it was then run by uh, Adrian, Adrian yeah. uh, what came, came on the market. So we, we, we investigated it and, and by the skin of our teeth, we managed to procure it. Uh, and that was in 83? And that was in the, not 1983. I think I would have been five at the time. So. <laughs> That's, 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 that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I just grew up with it. Grew up with the almonds. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I guess in saying that, um, you had um, we also had Andrew Lacey who helped us out um, in regards to knowledge as well. Um, yes. Yes. During the uh, mid nineties, uh, ninety five up to the year two thousand. Uh, the supply of young trees, re, uh, re replacing older trees, was drying up uh, and it couldn't get a tree anywhere. And so, so much so that uh, I've got quite a desperate in that uh, I've got trees that are, are not producing as well as they are capable of doing. So I uh, bought a, uh, about five acres, I, a trans uh, I replanted five acres into vines which uh, upset Peter, the, the accountant for Almond Co. Ne nevertheless it, it proved to be a, a, a good a, a good system in that it provided extra supplementary income with the least amount of effort uh, and that, that allowed us to keep on functioning. 
but it wasn't until we approached Andrew Lacey about the tree problem that he came to the fore and supplied us with trees. And hence, that's where we are today. Just went on from there. Yes, uh, we were able to expand and replace old, older trees that have uh, come to their useful life. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, what these ones are at that stage. So, yeah, they're, 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 over in America, they consider uh, the, the maximum life to be around about uh, 22 to 25 years of age. Uh, these trees here that we're, we're under now are about 50... Two eight, or three, 52, 53 years 50, old. 52, yeah. 53 years yeah. of age, still producing, looking relatively healthy, but the volume is not there as compared to yeah. the, the new budwood and rootstock material. Uh, it l leaves these trees for dead. Oh, but, absolutely. But it pays its expenses. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, exactly. So and it, it then is providing a steady income, which yeah. allowed us to expand further and pl plant more trees and, and becoming even more viable. Yeah. I, I can remember back uh, about uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, Australia was producing about 3,000 tonnes of a kernel which we thought was tremendous at the time. Uh, uh, compare that today, uh, it, 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 it's like a, a backyard operation. Uh, we are now exporting up around the 70,000 tonnes per year. And that is a staggering figure. But, but, this is, but the, the good side about this is that selling overseas increases your market size and capacity. We are now the second biggest grower in the world, which back then uh, we, we wouldn't have even registered. Mm. But we, we, we uh, improved the, not only the quality, but the standard and Australia quality is considered number one. I guess back in 2000 and Five to 2007, I went to work for an Andrew Lacey's wing in New South Wales. Over in Victoria. It, New it, South Wales there. It, 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 New South yeah, Wales, learned, yeah. learnt a lot yeah. more new yeah. um, fertigation practice, irrigation practice. Um, that was basically everything was converting to drip these days. Uh, learnt all how to, how to run an irrigation system and um, how to basically give the tree its right nutrition. Um, I spent three or four years over there myself. Come back here in 2000. 10, I think it was 2011. Um, worked abroad for a little while and then managed to save up enough money to buy this place. Um, and then I brought all those practices I learnt from the uh, from Andrew, um, and the yields have just uh, doubled since. So um, it's just been a, a life saving ex event going over there and learning how to grow almond trees, basically. So um, so now I've implemented those practices here. Um, and then we've now planted more almond trees, as much as we can fit in our little block of land here. Uh, and uh, yeah, th things are looking up. So yields are looking really good. Trees are looking great. So uh, it's just a matter of hopefully keeping these winds down and um, yeah, the sun shining. So um, That's right. Actually, I think it'd be, be a good policy if, if you can implement it. If growers do have a sun in a similar situation as we have, try and get them to go and work for somebody who's perhaps a bit more up to date uh, and uh, the son then can learn, which is what Patrick did, and, and I must agree, it paid dividends uh, because I can now quite confidently uh, leave the block and knowing it's in safe, comfortable hands. Because uh, uh, he looks to the future, which everybody must do. Yeah. Oh, you've got to try new things, don't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, if, if, you, if, if you see something that, uh, that may make your job easier, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, but this new mechanisation, that's the way to go. Absolutely. It's yeah. the way to go.